We have a new specimen. Look at this guy. Absolutely enormous. Looks really great. I have absolutely uh, no idea what it is. Today, we're going to get a closer look at some of the different parts of it and try to identify this bad boy and figure out what it is. It should be fun. Okay, first things first, distinctive traits. I'm going to pull this over to the side so that we have a little space for some text. When I look at this, the things that really pop out are one, it's hard exoskeleton, definitely. Also, it's bilaterally symmetric. So if you put a line and drew it down the middle, it's identical on the left side and the right side. We got some appendages that are jointed right here and a segmented body plan that's generally split into three different parts. We have the head, thorax and abdomen if you guys are catching on i'm pretty sure that this is an arthropod what the heck is an arthropod an arthropod is a phylum of organisms that include basically all your creepy crawly things you have your lobsters your spiders and your insects too but which one is our little guy right here well Arthropods can be split generally into four different groups. You have hexapods, which are insects, arachnids, which are spiders, and crustaceans, which are, I don't know, like marine creepy crawly things, and myriapods, which are millipedes and centipedes. You can distinguish them based on their number of legs. Hexapods have six legs, arachnids have eight legs, crustaceans have 10 legs, and myriapods have a trillion legs. So which one does this belong to? We have one leg, two, three, four, five, six. So Proof confirmed. This guy is confirmed an insect. It's in hexapod. So what type of insect is it? One of the things that I like doing is um, just checking off the major, major orders of, of insects. And if we can do that, we can eliminate like almost more than half the insects in the entire world as possibilities. So the ones that we're going to check out are uh, the orders Coleoptera, which are beetles, Hymenoptera, which are wasps, bees, and ants, and Lepidoptera which are butterflies and moths. So first, when it comes to beetles, a distinctive trait of Coleoptera or beetles are their elytra. So if you look at the back of the beetle, it looks like they have like a hard shell. Those are their, their front wings that have hardened to form wing coverings called elytra. Let's look at ours and see if it has any elytra on it. We're gonna scoop this to the middle. We're gonna push in to get a little closer look. Okay, if you look, it has these kind of hard wing coverings but if I poke them they're not extremely hard they're only a little bit hard definitely not hard enough to qualify as an elytra so we can eliminate beetles this is not in coleoptera congratulations we just eliminated more than half insects in the entire world hymenoptera next is this a wasp a bee or an ant key feature of these guys is they have a constriction between the first two segments of their abdomen this is called a wasp waist. The abdomen is the third section of an arthropod. You have the head, thorax, and abdomen. So we're looking for a constriction between the first two segments. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over very ever so delicately. We're going to touch it. We're going to flip it over in this hand. We're looking for an, a constriction in that third segment. Do you guys see any sort of a constriction? I do not so we can eliminate hymenoptera this is not a wasp a bee or an ant kind of unsurprisingly the last one we need to look at ooh, is lepidoptera is this a butterfly or a moth before you jump to any conclusions we all we always got to find proof so a key trait of lepidoptera is that they have two wings that are covered in tiny tiny colorful scales that overlap like shingles on a roof this is a key trait of Lepidoptera. Here's what they look like. What we're going to do is we're going to bring out our little microscope and we're going to take a close look at the wings on this guy. There we are. We're going to zoom out so we can focus in, scoot it to the side. We're going to zoom in on that guy. Huh. If it was a lep in Lepidoptera, we theoretically should be able to see those shingles. I don't see those shingles, so we can pretty confidently say that this is not a butterfly or a moth, but we're Kind of sure of that already, if we're being honest. So, we eliminate most of the insects in the entire world. Now things get a little bit tricky because now we got to do a little bit of a guess and check. When you look at this insect, does it remind you of anything? This is how I typically do this. Does it remind you of any other insect? Maybe it might look like this, might be shaped a little bit differently, might be a different size, but kind of generally. Because one definitely comes to mind if you ask me. When I look at this insect, it reminds me of something that's like, as weird as it sounds, like a grasshopper or a cricket. 
which might be surprising. You might think grasshoppers and crickets are typically typically smaller. They're not as giant as this guy, but a while ago I made a video on a giant katydid, which is in the same order as crickets and grasshoppers, orthoptera, and it was absolutely massive. So maybe this guy is the same thing. So I think we want to check the order orthoptera. Distinguishing traits of orthoptera are, interestingly, the mouths. This is where we can look. We'll take like a grasshopper as an example. Grasshoppers and <clears throat> insects and ornithoptera in general have heads and mouths that are mandibulate and hypognathous. Let's break that down. Mandibulate mouths are mouths that have mouth parts made for chewing. We would compare this to hostilate mouth parts, which are made for like sucking up liquids and, and stinging. Let's take a close look at this guy. Put it in the middle. Push in on it a bit. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Take a close look at the mouth. What do you think? Are those made for chewing or sucking? If you were to ask me, I don't see any tubes, I don't see any tongues, I don't see anything that looks like it would pierce. It has those kind of, those like branch parts, but those are just palps for like tasting and feeling and stuff like that. So I think this is uh, confirmed mandibulate. So uh, we're close to proving that this is in orthoptera. Oh shoot, a light went out. Okay, it's back on, we're all good. But we're not exactly there. The next thing we have to prove is oh shoot, what's going on with my light, <laughs> is uh, hypognathus. That's what we have to check. Hypognathus mouths are the orientation of the mouth. Is it facing forward, down, or back? The three different types of mouths are in mandibulate insects are prognathus mouths, which are mouths that are directed forward, hypognathus mouths, which are mouths that are directed downward, and epistognathus mouths, which are mouths pointed backward. Insects in Orthoptera have mouths that are pointed downward. So we're going to push in and check if this is a hypognath hypognathus mouth as well. Let's see. The comparison is on the right. We have our guy on the left here. Would you consider this a hypognathus mouth? If you ask me, this kind of looks like a prognathus mouth, like the perfect representation of a forward-facing mouth. So, unfortunately, I, don't, I think we've proven that this is not in the same order as grasshoppers and crickets. It's not orthoptera. So, we're back to the drawing board. If this is not a cricket, what else do you think it looks like? Look at the key distinguishing traits and think if you could think of any other insect that resembles this. What is going on with my light? Key things that come across right away. It's very long and it has these really short wings that look kind of like leaves. It's also very tubular, but that length seems pretty key. I haven't seen many insects that are, that are this long. So what do you think? Other insects that kind of look like this, that are long, maybe have some sort of camouflage, like these wings right here. Something that comes to mind for me, interestingly, is something like a stick insect or a leaf insect. Those insects are also long. They have some sort of camouflage -y stuff on them. What the heck? Those insects are kind of long, they have some camouflage -y stuff on them, and they happen to be in the order Phasmatodea, both walking sticks and leaf insects. That makes me think that this one might also be in that order. Now there are two families in that order, Heteropterygidae and Obriminae, that have a key characteristic in females, which I think there's, this is right here. And that's that that abdomen, that third segment that my fingers are pinched around, is very broad and flat in these two families. It's exactly like the insect that we have, Heteropterygidae and Obriminae. So, we have an insect in Phasmatodea that could possibly be in Heteropterygidae and Obriminae. Luckily for us, a key distinguishing factor between those two families is uh, their relative size. Insects in Obriminae are typically 1.2 to 5 inches. Insects in Heteropterygidae are 5.5 to 6.5 inches. Uh, what we're looking for is 5 inches. If it's under 5 inches, it's in Obriminae. If it's over 5 inches, it's in Heteropterygidae. Scoop it up. We'll bring out our thing. Throw it down. This sucker is definitely over 5 inches, so we can eliminate Abriminate. This is definitely in Heteropterygidae. Luckily for us, there's only one genus and species, only one insect in this entire family, and that is 
Heteropteryx dilatata, aka the Malaysian jungle nymph. This is what one of those looks like. What do you think?